Hey guys, this is Inka, and in this video, I will only be eating Disney princess foods for 24 hours. You guys have seen me do a lot of cooking challenges so far, obviously a lot of colored food ones, which I'm still going to be making. And I've also done videos where I try to recreate a dish from a specific game. And as someone who loves Disney and especially Disney princesses, I thought it would be fun to challenge myself to only make and eat Disney princess meals for 24 hours. I think it's really cool that a lot of these Disney princesses have different cultural backgrounds. That also means that today I will be making a variety of dishes from all across the world and that's pretty exciting. I'm looking at making at least three meals and one dessert so I'm gonna be crazy busy in the kitchen today. It's going to be a fun-filled journey or should I say a magical adventure. All right. Let's do this. Good morning. It is now time for breakfast, the most important meal of the day. For this meal, I have decided to go with the bacon and egg porridge slash kanji from Mulan, my favorite Disney princess. For those of you who remember the one that has that like cute little smiley face on top, this is the porridge that Mushu made Mulan on her first day of training to kind of cheer her up and encourage her. So I figured this is kind of the perfect way to start off today. I'm not entirely sure why there's bacon. I feel like regular pork belly is a little more mainstream in Chinese culture, but regardless, I am going to make my dish as similar as the one Mulan had. All right, let's get started and hope I bring honor to us all. <laughs> Ingredients wise, we only have a few things. We need our eggy eyes and then our bacon smile and I have a cup of rice. I grew up eating kanji a lot and my mom used to put like sliced ginger pieces into my kanji both for flavor and because she said it was good for me. And I also like to flavor it with a little bit of salt and some white pepper. I'm also gonna be using my trusty rice cooker to cook the porridge for me since it has a porridge setting and that can save me some time. First things first, gotta wash the rice. Drop a little bit of ginger in there, close it, porridge option. Okay, and while the kanji's cooking, I'm gonna get started on frying up the eggs and the bacon. Also making some Chinese tea. Exciting news, my kanji is finally done. Ta-da! Just add a sprinkle of that white pepper powder, a tiny bit of salt, give it a good mix and porridge is done. I have my bacon and I have my two eggs. So all that's left at this point is just to plate everything up and make sure that my smiley face actually looks like a smiley face. Ta-da! It looks a little cross-eyed for sure, but that's kind of what the eyes look like in the movie. And my little bacon strip here, the color looks pretty on point, so I'm very, very happy. And also here I have my tea that I made earlier. I had to have tea with this meal because remember when Mulan went to meet like the matchmaker? I remember one of the evaluations was her pouring tea and I just remember that scene so vividly. And also tea just goes really well with Chinese breakfast and kanji. I'm actually really, really happy with how this meal turned out. It smells really comforting. Growing up, my mom would usually make kanji for me when I'm sick. So this is just very nostalgic and super cute. I'm gonna take a bite. Oh, my little smiley face is, is destroyed. It's warm, it's comforting. I love the little bits of ginger in there. It just gives it a little more flavor. Also, this is a big bowl of kanji. It's a very, very filling one, which is probably appropriate because Mulan was having this before she had to do her training. So she needed um, sustenance. I'm gonna take a sip of my tea. This is honestly one of the best ways to start off your days because it's like, fills you up with warmth, it's comforting, you know you're not gonna be hungry for a while. I love it. And I'm sure Mulan appreciated this meal as well. Going to actually sit down now and slowly enjoy this meal before I get started on lunch. I finally finished breakfast and I am super, super full, but the next meal I wanna make takes a lot of cooking time. So I'm gonna get started right away. Back to the kitchen it is. So for lunch, I'm going to be making Princess Tiana's gumbo from The Princess and the Frog. Princess Tiana is obviously an amazing chef. All the food in that film just looked so incredible. And I remember that scene where she was making gumbo with her dad, you know, when she was just like a little kid and she was stirring this huge pot of gumbo and her dad had that first bite and 
it just like blew his mind. Princess Tiana grew up in New Orleans, which is one of my favorite places to be. Amazing music, amazing flavors, and gumbo is one of their most popular dishes. So I'm excited to try and make it today and hopefully make Tiana proud. I did quite a bit of research and these are the ingredients I'll be using. Chicken thighs, some andouille sausages, then I have some okra, some chicken stock, red bell pepper, celery, garlic, and onion. I'm putting shrimp in because I remember Tiana putting some in her so that's why I'm gonna dress mine up with some of these eventually. Some bay leaf and this really special spice blend. These two spice blends are ones that I bought when I went to New Orleans a while back and I'm very, very excited to use it because they just smell so good. This is going to be a very, very hearty stew and it's going to take a lot of time, but you know how Tiana always just looks like she's having so much time enjoying herself in the kitchen, singing and dancing. So I am hoping to channel that energy today and make this gumbo. First thing I'm gonna do is fry up my chicken thighs, season them of course with some salt and pepper and a little bit of this spice blend. And in the meantime, I'm going to chop up my vegetables, also my sausages. Chicken is done, I've set it to a side. Now to make our roux, which is what's going to make our gumbo slightly thicker and also give it that signature smoky flavor. Again, this step will take quite a bit of time. I'm talking 30 to 40 minutes, but I'm just going to put on some music and jam out. Okay, the roux is pretty much done. It is this dark like milk chocolate color. It smells really smoky but not burnt, so that's a good sign. So now I can throw in my vegetables and just cook that a little bit until tender. And then I'm just deglazing it before I add in my chicken stock. Lots of flavor going on in here. Chicken stock is in, now I'm also throwing in some thyme, also my sausages, and a bit of okra. So at this point, everything that needs to be in is already in. The next thing to do is basically let this simmer for at least three hours. So yeah, quite a bit of time. That just means I can do some work now, and then I can check on it every once in a while, make sure it doesn't stick. And then we'll add the shrimp in at the very end. It smells so good in here right now. Even before I'm tasting it, I can already smell all those flavors we put in. Ta-da! This consistency looks about right. The smell is just incredible. So far, it does look like the one that Tiana made, so I am very, very excited about this. Also the kind of smell that already makes you kind of salivate. So yeah, this is done. I am going to put this in a bowl and serve it up. All right, and here is my final product. This is what my gumbo looks like. I put a little bit of rice in the middle. That's how they usually serve it. I also put some green onions on the very top. The color looks about right. I also grabbed my Tabasco because Tiana in the movie adds a dash of this to her final plate and her dad loved it, so I figured. I would do that too. I also made a quick cup of iced coffee to go with it. I wish I had beignets. For now, I am so ready to try this gumbo. It just smells so good. A little bit of everything. Oh God. So I did have gumbo a few times when I was in Louisiana and this does remind me of it. There's so much flavor in here because of all the stuff we put in, right? So you end up with this like spicy, savory, and very, very rich stew. I'm gonna add a little bit of Tabasco. It all goes together so well. Oh my God, wow. You know how in the film when people first have Tiana's cooking, their faces just like light up? That's how I feel right now. Can't stop eating this. I am not eating like a Disney princess. I'm just like stuffing my face. A Disney princess who can make this? Incredible. All right, I will not subject you guys to watching me wolf down the rest of this. Even though it took a lot of time, I'm really glad I had the opportunity to actually make this and taste this at home. It is definitely spicy though. I'm like um, sweating. All right, I'm now gonna eat this off screen and then we're gonna be back to get started on dinner, which is going to be a feast as if I haven't been feasting all day already. Okay, that was a super satisfying meal, but my work is far from done because for dinner, I'm planning on making a meal from Beauty and the Beast. So remember when Belle first gets to the castle and they welcome her with this whole spread of food? That's also the part where Lumiere sings Be Our Guest, which is one of my favorite songs. There's this one part where the chorus goes, Be Fragu, Cheese Souffle, and you see like the little trays of food dancing on the table. That's what I'm gonna do. 
the beef ragu and a cheese souffle. It's a little ambitious, I know, and because I do not have the help of animated objects, I am going to start prepping fairly early. So I'm gonna get started with our beef ragu. These are the base ingredients I have. Some beef, onion, garlic, tomato paste here, diced tomatoes, as well as some aromatics. I'm going to add some more spices along the way as well as some wine, but the main thing here is that the sauce needs to cook for a long time. That's why I am starting so early. The first thing I'm gonna do is to brown my beef, season it a little bit, and I'm gonna let it do its thing while I cut up the vegetables. Adding some tomato paste and deglaze this with some wine. I know I just ate, but it's so hard to not want to eat again. I have no idea how Belle resisted. Like if I was Belle, I'd just camp out right there. I had some frozen beef stock, so I put that in there as well. And I'm gonna add my fire roasted tomatoes. Gotta make sure I added my beef again too. This is going to be another big pot full of food. Making my little spice pack at time. My bay leaf, some rosemary. I think I may have cooked a little bit too much again, but I guess it fits the theme of a feast. Now I'm going to season it a little bit and then cover it and let it simmer for around two hours. I think I'm gonna rest a little bit now before I take on the cheese souffle. All right, so it's been a few hours. My apron is back on and my beef ragu is still cooking off to the side. I'm gonna take a peek. Oh, it is looking pretty good, but I think it still needs an hour more. So while that's bubbling still, I am going to get started on the cheese souffle. For my cheese souffle, I'm gonna go with this pretty big ramekin. I have some whole milk, some egg whites, egg yolks that I've already separated, a little bit of butter, some flour, and then two types of cheese. I have some Parmesan and some Gruyere. First things first, I'm gonna grate my cheese. I'm also just heating some milk over here on low heat. And then now that I have my grated Parmesan, I'm just going to put it in my ramekin, coat it. This is now covered in cheese. My milk has heated up, so I'm just gonna remove it. I'm gonna put my butter in here. Wouldn't it be so nice if your tools could just cook for you? I mean, because that's what happens in Beauty and the Beast, right? But for now, it's uh, work hard, eat hard. I'm gonna slowly add in my flour. And make sure it's all combined. Whew, I'm basically just cooking it down until it becomes thick. I should have known that a feast requires a lot of time and effort, but I had to do it. This is now looking pretty good. This is essentially a bechamel sauce, and I'm just gonna flavor it with some seasonings. Now I am going to add in my egg yolks. Let it cool so I can work on the egg whites. I really hope that Belle appreciated that there was this much effort that went into her meal. Now to combine everything, I do want it to have that beautiful top that I saw in the animation. And my cheese. Into the oven. Cheese souffle is in the oven. Beef ragu is pretty much done. So I'm going to clean up and I'm gonna cook some pasta for the beef ragu. So then the next time you see me, I should have a beautiful spread of food in front of me. Okay, you guys, I didn't even have time to take off my apron because I had to run and get the cheese souffle, but let me, can I just show you guys this cheese souffle? It has that beautiful rise. Look how jiggly it is. Oh my God. I think Lumiere would be very proud. I'm so tired and it's slowly deflating right now. That's just what happens with souffles, but also let me show you the ragu. I've just put it with some pasta. This is truly the highlight of my dinner. Also in an effort to make it a little more fine dining, I am also drinking some white wine and I totally lit a candle to be extra. Like Lumiere said, it is about creating the finest experience for our guests and I am my own guest. This is a better time than any to say bon appetit. So I'm gonna try this right now. It's cooked for hours. The wine's infused with the beef broth. The beef is like super tender now. Even if it takes a lot of time, it is very worth it. And I feel like all those hours you put in, you can actually taste it in the sauce. Mm. I'm gonna cut into the cheese souffle now. Ooh boy, it is fluffy. Get out, take it out. 
Oh boy. It is so fluffy, oh my goodness. It is super light on the inside. I am genuinely so excited about this. It is truly so airy, like very light, very fluffy, but you get like the faint taste of cheese in there. And it's so creamy too. I am so glad I was able to make this. Finally now, I can sit down and rest. I really have been cooking all day. I am not exaggerating, literally since bright and early in the morning to now the sky is getting dark. Eating like a Disney princess is so great. The food is amazing. Cooking for one really takes a lot of time and effort. I'm really glad that I made it to almost the end of day and I really hope I did the recipes justice. There's still dessert coming up, but for now I am going to take a quick break and then I can enjoy my dessert. All right, this is officially the last meal of today. I am so tired. This is literally how I feel right now. I can only keep one eye open. I decided to go with the Empire Biscuits from the movie Brave. I really wanted to make these because I remember how obsessed Merida's brothers were with this biscuit. They literally tried to steal it from the lady who made it and they would literally gobble all of it up. Empire Biscuits are also a classic Scottish treat, so I really wanted to give it a try. So I actually did most of the work yesterday because I knew I'd be super exhausted today. And all I did was pretty much combine powdered sugar, flour, and egg yolk, some vanilla and cold butter, processed that and then made it into a dough and then I chilled it and then I cut out little shapes and baked them. And then I put a little bit of icing on some of the cookies. All I have to do at this point is just dress them up a little bit and finish it up. I actually made two sizes. One is very much thicker than the other one. I figured this one would look more like the one in the movie, whereas normally Empire Biscuits have raspberry jam in the middle and it's like a sandwich cookie. And I really wanted to try both versions so I'm gonna be making both. Just spreading some jam on, squish it down like so. All that's left to do is to top it off with half of a cherry. This is my Empire Biscuits. If I stack it like this, it looks even more like it. This one probably looks the most like it because of its thickness and I deliberately kind of like made the icing a little more messy since that seemed to be the kind of feel that the movie was going for. <sighs> it's truly just like a very buttery shortbread. And I can totally see why Merida's brothers would be obsessed with that. I feel like you just can't go wrong with a buttery cookie that has icing on it. So yeah, this is it. Made it to the very end. These 24 hours definitely felt a lot longer. But with that being said, I do kind of feel like I just like traveled around the world. I feel like we started in like China, then we went to New Orleans, then I went to France, then I went to Scotland. It was just super cool testing out these recipes from Disney princesses that lived all around the world. So even though I am pretty exhausted now, it was still very much a magical adventure. So thank you, Disney princesses. I don't know, maybe next time I will do a 24 hour cooking challenge based off of Pixar films, Studio Ghibli. The possibilities are endless, so let me know what else you might wanna see and I will see you guys next time. I'm gonna get some sleep now. Bye.